Okay, I'm going to finish up uh, with just a little bit of, of, of radiation safety uh, education here. And the way I'm going to start is just to let you know, as, as most of you do, that there is such a thing as background radiation. We can measure the amount of radiation that we're, we're getting. And we all get on the order of one millirem per day. And I'm just trying to use a millirem because it's a nice, uh, a nice thing. One per day is a nice, easy thing to remember. It just comes from the world around us. So what do we know about radiation? Well, we know if we get 500,000 millirem to your whole body at once, it'll likely kill you. Um, that's what happened at Chernobyl to the people who were working there and were in that high radiation environment for uh, you know for for too for too long. So we know a lot of radiation absolutely will kill you. If we go down a factor of ten from that to fifty thousand millirem to your whole body at once, uh, we believe that there is a very slight increase in your risk of cancer. We have we have some evidence that suggests that this is probably the case, but it's still not a slam dunk. Um, uh, and it is based largely on this, that we have set a limit for radiation workers like me and like the technologists that work at the pet center and the nuclear medicine departments and like the radiochemists, they can get 5,000 millirem per year uh, as their, every year for their, enti for their entire working life, sometimes 30 and 40 years. Um, and there is no direct evidence of risk at this level. We infer that there's risk from this higher dose. It's the reason we have these regulations in, but we try to go functionally a factor of 10 beneath this level where we, we probably are detecting something and that's where this comes from. If we look at cancer rates among radiation workers, um, they're the same or actually lower uh, than they are in the general population. Um, same thing actually with workers at, at, at nuclear power plants and the like. Most diagnostic imaging procedures, which is really what we're talking about today, are between 10 and 1,000 millirem. So you as a patient will likely be getting much less radiation uh, in your exam than our radiation workers are actually getting, uh, although, albeit over the course of, a, course of a year. And remember that one millirem per day is background radiation. Um, please understand that it's prudent for public safety to assume that every dose of ionizing radiation, no matter how small, might carry some small risk of unwanted health effects. This may not be true, but we assume this in our regulatory policy um, as we move forward. I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that there is a fair amount of data suggesting to the contrary that low levels of radiation may actually be beneficial. Well, there's a, uh, but we won't get into the hormesis hypothesis, but the, there is there is some data out there that suggests that. But regulations don't care about that. Regulations uh, are, are, are conservative. Um, just to give you an example, uh, better to look at the, the right side uh, than the left, a thyroid scan is about two weeks worth of background radiation, very small. Um, a lung scan or bone scan uh, are on the order of two to 400 millirem. And a, and a PET CT study is on the high end uh, with a PET with the CT uh, added on is somewhere between 1,100 and 1,500 millirem, uh, millirem these days. Still a factor of, of three to five lower than a radiation worker can get. And we work hard to try and keep these low, as low as we can. We, the amount of dose that we inject is, is, is enough to get a good image, but we don't want to give any, any more. These are kind of silly things to do to kind of come up and, and, and compare uh, compare risks. We'll spend a little bit more time on the, on the right side. Uh, the potential risk from for a secondary cancer from a PET scan uh, is about equivalent to your risk of, of dying, falling down the stairs over your lifetime. And the cancer from, uh, from di getting cancer from uh, a bone scan uh, is, is equivalent approximately to dying from an accident while riding on a bike. These are pretty low compared to, uh, compared to these compared to these other things. Um, the, the important thing to, uh, to remember, however, is the risk to the diagnostic imaging procedure isn't the major risk. The major risk is the disease that you have, right? I mean, you, you, you have cancer or you have heart disease or you have maybe have Alzheimer's disease. These are, these are, these are the, the big risks. Um, and what we're talking about is trying to get enough information to provide for your care. Um, and, uh, and so in all cases, we want to make sure that the benefit of the imaging study far outweighs any potential risk. If it doesn't, we shouldn't be doing the scan, right? So we try to keep the risk as far down as we possibly can. Um, every imaging procedure takes a certain amount of radiation to perform appropriately. This is well studied and we're working hard to even make it lower. Uh, that's what some of the scanner development is doing is to allow us to use lower dose. 
Um, using too much dose leads to unnecessary radiation dose in the patient, I would argue that one of the major risks uh, is if you use too little radiation, you may not provide much en enough information. You get a crappy scan and we can't make the diagnosis and we can't treat you. If we miss that small metastasis because we tried to spare you this little tiny bit of radiation dose which has a very low risk, um, that, that's a problem, right? So uh, that's a, that may be harmful in and of itself. Uh, the imaging community in the SNMI is actively involved in monitoring dose and reducing dose by being engaged in the Image Gently and Image Wisely campaigns. Uh, they have a website uh, uh, where they can, where you can get information on this, provide information both to patients and uh, and, and referring physicians. Um, please, uh, I hope you enjoyed and learned a little something, and uh, and stay safe. Uh, thank you very much.